Hello everyone. Today let us know about the project online grocery store. Now let us extract the project. We can see that the zipped file is extracting. Now let us open the folder. So in the folder we can see three other zipped files. One is source code. Let us extract this file and database backup and document. Let us extract all the three files. Now we can see that the files are extracting and the folders have been created. So once the extraction is complete, we can view the files inside the folders. Now let us view the source code folder. This includes all the PHP files and the folders which are required to execute the project. And in the database backup, we can find the SQL file of the project. And in the document, we can see some documentations required for the project. Now let us copy the source code folder. And let us paste this in C drive in the XAMPP folder inside the htdocs folder. This is because I have installed XAMPP control panel in the C drive. So in whichever drive you have installed, paste it in that particular folder inside the htdocs folder so once it is done now we can view the source code folder here and we can view the php files here now let us open the xamp control panel and let us start apache and mysql server so we can see that the apache and mysql servers are running now let us copy the name of the folder source code Open the Chrome browser. So here I am using Chrome browser. You can use any of the browsers. But Chrome browser is best. Type localhost slash and paste the name what you have copied. So this is the project online grocery store or supermarket. Where the customers can buy various products here. We can see unknown database supermarket. This is because we have not uploaded the Database. To upload the database, we have to open a new tab and type localhost slash php my admin. Type php my admin. So you can find it here. So this is the php my admin server. It is my SQL server. Where by clicking on databases, we can create the new databases. So we can see the name of the database which is there in our folder. So the name of the database is supermarket you can just type this or you can also copy the name and paste it in the database name so let us copy this name and let us paste this in the database name let's click on create so this will create the database supermarket but the but we can see there are no tables here to Import the database, let us click on import and click on choose file. Since we already have the database with us, there is no need of creating the tables. We can just import the database what we have. So select the database. Once it is selected, you can see that maximum size should be 40 MBs. So click on go. So this will take some time to import and it depends on the size of the database what we have got. Now we can see the import is successful and we can see there are 9 tables. So now let us refresh the project. So now we cannot see any error. Now the database has been imported and we can view the products. So this is the supermarket or online grocery store web page where the customers from different locations can choose their location and then they can do the shoppings. Here there are admin who manages the entire web page and also along with the admin there are staff. We can see the database where there are 9 tables and there are different tables on which the data will be stored. The staff data will be stored in the staff table. The customer data will be stored in the customer table and billing and address details and all the other details are stored in particular tables. So about the admin and the customer let us view further
now let us log in as the admin so in the staff table we can see the admin login id and password we can see the password is encrypted so let us click on edit and let us change the password here so i'm giving the password as admin admin and now to encrypt this we must choose the type as md5 so let us select and choose the type as md5 and let us click on go so this will update the password of the admin you can also change the login id so we can see now it is encrypted again but now you know the password so we can log in in the web page using the password what we have given so in the login id let us type admin and in the password let us enter admin admin so this is the admin account login process and we can find the dashboard as the admin logs in so here the various records present in different tables can be viewed by the admin under my account in my profile here the admin can update their profile details their staff de type and uh, name they cannot change their city because the admin doesn't have any city to be selected in the change password admin can change their password and in add staff here the admin has the authority to add the different staffs for different city locations and they may they can add the staff type as staff as well as admin then the name of the staff must be entered and the login id of the staff must be added then password and confirm password is also required then the email id of the staff and the mobile number of the staff must be entered and the status must be selected as active by clicking on submit the staff entry will be successfully done and under view staff the various staffs work for the supermarket can be viewed by the admin they can also delete or edit the staff details under entry in add city here the admin can add the various cities where the web page is active or which means where the supermarket is functioning and the pin code of the city must be entered and description about the city can be added the status must be selected as active so once the city is added it can be viewed under view city and in the select location also we can view that particular city under view city we can view the city along with the different pin codes and it can be edited as well as deleted under add product the different products which are available in the supermarket can be added but before adding the product the category of the product must be added so now let us select the main category and based on that let us add the category title for the product then the description of the category title must be entered and the status must be selected as active so once the category is added it can be viewed under view category under add product the various products can be added to add the product the name of the product must be entered once the name of the product is entered the category under which the particular product comes that must be selected then the price of that particular product and the image of the product must be selected and what is the discount in percentage for the product that also must be entered and the unit that is how many products are available 
that must be entered and the product specification the detailed explanation of the product must be entered here then the stock status that is whether the stock is available or out of stock that must be selected and the status must be selected as active once the product is added this can be viewed under view product so under view product we can view the various products and based on that product we can add the sub products also we can edit or delete the products so here now we can see there are zero sub products so let us add the sub product So let us click on add sub products and we can view the product detail here and we can add the sub product with the how many units and the color what is the color of the product and the image of the product the cost again sometimes the if the color changes the uh, based on the color the cost differs therefore the cost must be entered and what is the discount available for this particular sub product and whether how much stock is available and what is the status that must be selected so once the sub product is added it can be viewed under sub products and under menu households now we can view the products which are added and by click on view more we can view the product in detail and you can also select the different sub products here and the customers can add the product to cart and they can buy the products under stock entry under add stock entry here the stock bill can be added by the admin the purchase date of the stock the city of the stock from where it is purchased and who is the seller from whom the stock is purchased and any comments regarding the product which is purchased or it can be about the seller also and the title of the product the name of the product and the sub product type what is the total quantity purchased and what is the cost per quantity then click to add this will add the product to the billing so click to submit this will enter the stock entry so the stock entry receipt is available this can be printed by the admin and under view stock entry the various stock entries can be viewed and under stock report the stock report details can be viewed the different receipts can also be viewed here and the receipts can be printed also under ad seller here are the various sellers from whom the company purchases the products can be added here the name of the seller the email id of the seller and the mobile number and the status of the seller must be selected whether it is active or inactive by clicking on submit the seller details will be added successfully under view seller the seller details can be viewed by the admin and if the seller is no longer in contact or in business with the company then the details of the seller can be deleted under billing report the various billings made by the customers can be viewed the purchases made by the customer can be viewed here and the customer account report the customer account details can be viewed so this can be deleted but it cannot be edited so this is about the admin let us log out from the admin now let us register as the customer to register as a customer the customer must select their location then by clicking on the register panel they can fill the form which is available for the registration here the customer must enter their name 
the email id and their mobile number is also required once they enter all these details then the password and confirm password is necessary the customer must accept the terms and conditions of the web page to go further with the complete registration once the registration is successful the login panel is available for the customer and if the customer forgets the password then there is an option to retain their password once the customer logs in successfully they can view the web page and here they can view the various products which are available and they can purchase the different products which they are interested under my profile they can update their profile details the name or the email id or the mobile number can be changed and under change password the customer can make changes to their password details under delivery address here the customer must add the delivery address that is where they want their item to be or the product they have purchased to be delivered so here the address the city once the address is added the city must be selected and then the pin code must be entered and the state must be entered and the mobile number must be entered the customer can add any number of addresses here so once the address is added they can view the address here and there is an add address option where the customer can add the address again so let us add one more address here let us add the address then let us select the city pin code and the state must be entered and the mobile number is required so now for this particular customer we have added two addresses if the customer has made the order then under order report they can view the orders they have made under home in the various menus the customer can choose the menu and they can view the different products and by clicking on view more they can view the product description and details and they can select the product and add to cart once the product is added to cart they can buy the products or they can also browse more products if they are satisfied with one product then they can proceed with the order and they can make the payment so to make the payment they must select the address from the address what they have added then the card type must be added and the card holder's name must be entered and the card number must be entered then the expiry date of the card and the cvv number of the card is also required other than that the city pin code mobile number is auto fetched from the address so once the billing is done the receipt is available which can be printed by the customer so under my account in order report now the customer can view the order report and we can see that the delivery status is pending under view receipt the billing receipt can be viewed by the customer now let us log out from the customer and let us proceed with the delivery now let us log in as the staff 
under admin login panel so here the staff from the same location or as of the customer can proceed the delivery of the product so here both our customer and the staff are from shimoga so under report under billing report here now the cust the staff can view the delivery status and here by clicking on click here to deliver the staff can proceed with the delivery of the product so now we can see that the product has been delivered and there is no option to proceed with the delivery and we can see the delivery date on the bill now under billing report if we check we can see that the product delivery date is available so now let us log out so this is about the project online grocery store so now let us log in as the customer and let us just check whether the product has been delivered to the customer so under the customer profile under order report now we can see that the order status that is delivery status is delivered and in the receipt also we can view that the product has been delivered and this can be printed by the customer so let us log out from the customer so this is about the project online grocery store so thank you for watching the video for further queries kindly visit our web page thank you